right, guys. Today we are going to take a peek at uh, the build that I use for Mythic Plus as Feral. Um, we're going to look through talents, essences, Azerite traits, and uh, corruption. And we'll take a peek at the end at, uh, you know, trinkets and, and weapons and uh, stats, stuff like that. We're going to do kind of a full through um, and follow up with, with a little bit of uh, a display of what they can do. So um, let's get right into it. Um, so to start, we'll take a look at the, uh, the talents because we got them up here. Um, there's really only one change that I do depending on the week. If it's tyrannical, I'm going to run Sabretooth and Brutal Slash. Now I'm going to be honest, if it's only, if you're running a tyrannical 15, 16 around there, I would honestly still run, uh, the Predator Primal Wrath. Um, we'll go top down. So... Predator and Sabretooth are the two real viable ones. I like Predator more often than not in Mythic Plus because of the majority of the key, the time that you spend in the key is killing adds. You're killing more adds and you're killing bosses. Um, and so you're getting more Tiger's Fury, you're getting more energy, you're getting more damage put out. Um, so that, that has a lot of utility um, in most dungeon scenarios. Uh, Sabretooth is when it's a, you know, you're, you're doing a really aggressive tyrannical dungeon with bosses that have a ton of HP, have super, super crazy damaging abilities that you need to handle before another one comes out. Um, just ups the, ups the damage of Ferocious Bite, and you'll, I mean, I see, with the build that I have, I see Ferocious Bites come out, um, to do, I mean, anywhere from 180 to 300k damage. So, <clears throat> that's, that's kind of where that comes in. For this, uh, the level 30, I, I pretty much always go with Renewal. Helps out the healers. It, it allows you to get a little bit more risky with some of the stuff that you do. Um, and also, if there's a scenario where the tank goes down, you can go into bear form, you can pop a Survival Instincts, and you got a Renewal that you can cast on yourself to, to keep things flowing while either a Battle Res goes off with the tank or you wait for him to get back. So I, I, I choose that over any of the other ones. Wild Charge could be useful, but uh, honestly, to me, that comes off as more of a PvP ability. Um, when it comes to Feral, just because you can leap behind an enemy dazing them. Um, next row, I, I've played around with Guardian Affinity a little bit. I, I haven't gotten to the keys yet where I need that thick hide, and so it kind of just is, it, you don't use it a whole lot. I played around with it this week, which you have uh, um, uh, Grievous to try to help the healer out, and again, it wasn't something that I, I wound up using that much. I haven't run with a, ton, a bunch of healers that have had any issues with it. Um, so balance affinity just allows for you to interact, especially, um, in obelisk situations where you got a, an enemy that puts down blobs on the ground and you need to be able to hit them. Having that additional range is huge. You're not going to use any of the other spells. I don't ever moon fire or anything like that, but that extra range that you get on all of your feral abilities is massive. And I love it. Um, on the level 60 row, I almost always go with typhoon just because it helps, especially when you're running with a tank you can communicate with. It helps you uh, helps them kite, um, which allows the tank to run a little bit more of a aggressive damage build um, because they don't have to worry about sitting there and face taking everything. It is the the druids version of or the feral druids version of the treants that balance gets without it being as as useful. Mass entangle, uh, you know that used to be useful when the uh, the blobs in King's Rest. Uh, on the first boss, had a little bit more HP, uh, but now they go down so quick. Mighty Bash, it's another stun that you just don't need. Feral already has so many stuns and interrupts and what have you is in its toolkit. Having that Typhoon is just worth it. Um, the next tier, uh, I run Soul of the Forest um, exclusively. Um, it just, it, all around, is, is better than the other ones, so you don't even have to worry about the other, in my opinion. Um, for this next tier, I run one of two things. Again, it's kind of a tyrannical, uh, tyrannical fortified sort of situation. Brutal Slash is the one that I'll run for pure, like, single target, heavy tyrannical. You got to handle big bosses quickly. Um, and I, I'm cranking between 70 and 95k, depending on how much is required that I do during the boss, aside from damage, uh, when I run that. Primal Wrath, though, again, a majority of the dungeon is spent dealing with adds, and Feral has a very, very steep drop-off when you don't have this ability in their, our, our ability to AoE. Um, so, and it just doesn't feel real good in dungeons that you're, you're running your single target build for. Super helpful on the bosses, but the rest of the, the, rest of the dungeon, you're kind of just seeding all of your power to the other DPS. Um, and then for this final row, I run Blood Towns. Just Blood Towns exclusively. Um, 
and we'll we'll get into when we uh, at the end of the video we'll get into like how to, to time out blood talons to make sure that you're getting the most out of it um as well as some other little tips and tricks to really milk the uh the most that you can out of your abilities all right <clears throat> next thing that we're going to look at is our essences um so it's a one trick wonder for feral which makes it super easy however uh two of the four essences you want are pvp essences so you're going to my chat is going nuts uh you're going to want to run um conflict and strife memory of lucid dreams and breath of the dying as miners and major i always run blood of the enemy you may have higher sims with breath of the dying it's not worth it though um for 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 patchwork and single target it's not worth it blood of the enemy is is i i mean the numbers I see out of that just far and away in practice, it's a lot easier and, and manageable and the numbers are more realistic that I get from that. Conflict and Strife just ups your verse. Um, the build that I have right now, I'm actually kind of crit capped. So having that additional verse is really good. Memory of Lucid Dreams is huge because of the, uh, the refunded energy um, and more versatility, obviously. Breath of the Dying you really want because of the uh, increased corruption resistance, but it also does add a good amount of... Um, Good amount of damage, passive damage. And then your Blood of the Enemy is, is just another big AoE ability that you have. That'll also up your critical strike and stuff. So that's that's the build that I run, whether it's Tyrannical or Fortify. That's, that's hands down everything. So it used to be all Jungle Fury and Wild fresh, Flesh Rending until this tier. Um, Heart of Darkness actually is massive for us because of how strong secondary stats have become with Corruptions. So... Um, the best in slot pieces that you can get to run in any dungeons and you don't have to worry about fortified or tyrannical it's the same thing because they're they they affect uh damage overall or secondary stats which is great um the stygian guys off of mott the extravagant epaulets i like those better than the shoulders off of um ilganoth um just because Clockwork Heart procs on the minute immediately on pull, it's it's very guaranteeable. Um, so it's, it makes for these nice fat openers. And then Dark Heart Robe. So if you can't get these exact ones, what you really want, you want Jungle Fury for sure. Because Critical Strike is kind of what we built everything around here as Feral Druids. Um, so anything that ups your Critical Strike. Overwhelming Power on One Piece is nice, but Haste isn't actually a massive priority for Feral Druids. Um, nor is mastery, but you don't want zero of each. Uh, versatility, uh, versatility, crit are our two big ones. Um, Gut Ripper is great. Wild Flesh Rending is great. Um, that ad that additional damage that Shred deals um, when they're suffering from Thrash. So that's one of those things that it, as a Feral, it is easy to like just hit buttons when your energy is available. But you really want to be hitting Shred as much as you can because of Wild Flesh Rending when you have this one. You're going to see higher consistent damage if you're using Shred instead of Swipe or Thrash. And uh, that also comes into uh, snapshotting your bleeds, which we'll get into a, in a little bit. The next thing we're going to look at is gearing. Corruption, stats, stuff like that. All right, so what we're, what we're dealing with here is um, stat-wise, I've got about uh, just around a 50% critical strike baseline. And the reason I try to keep it right around there is because any higher, and you're actually going to cap out once you start having things like Jungle Fury, buff up your crit and blood of the enemy and what have you. So keeping it right around here ensures that you're never going to overcap on crit. Um, but I mean, in order to get it here, I'm running just as much critical strike as I possibly can um, up to the point where the most recent corruption I added was actually the uh, versatility, versatile, um, because that was that I had hit that break point as uh, on critical strike. And the Sims said it was time for Versatile. So Sims are still very, very helpful for dungeons. Uh, I typically run on raid bots the uh, the Dungeon Cleave, or Dungeon Slice Beta, I think is what it is. Um, for Trinkets, I run Torment in a Jar and uh, Harlands. Those, I, the, the stats that you get from Harlands are great. Torment in the Jar has a, has a pretty nice proc rate. Um, it allows, it has, it, it interacts, it synergizes well with both AoE and single target, so... You're not really going to see yourself losing a whole lot of damage if you choose to run these on Tyrannical or Fortified. Um, the only other thing I might switch it up with, and I, I honestly haven't been using it very often because of how high my crit is now, is Ashvane's Razor Coral. Um, if you're doing like a real, real sweaty Tyrannical week, 
you may think about throwing something like that in, but more often than not, this, these two work perfectly fine for me. Um, if you're looking at the two set uh, ring set that you can get from Mechagon, the logic loop of recursion, which is the three different spells or abilities on the same target, and then the um, the shortening bit band, shorting bit band. Uh, the reason that is, is, and you'll see it here in a second, is Feral Druids, within the span of like three seconds, use three different spells and abilities. And it's, it's a part of our regular rotation to do that very, very quickly, very often. Now, the only problem is, is it's got like a 15 second cooldown, I think, on this. So it's not every time you use those, which is why I've actually swapped out the second one, because the second one has Heavy Haste and Mastery, our two worst stats. So you're, you know, you're going to benefit from having maybe a higher item level with some versatility or higher item level with crit. This one I went with because it has a, a fat amount of versatility. I was already pretty much good on crit. Um, and I had the socket on it already. So there you go. Um, for your weapon, if you can, get the uh, Anzig Vra um, from Mott, even if it's on normal, if it's on heroic. The Drain Vitality corruption that you can only get on that weapon is massive it, it approximates to about 10 percent of your overall damage and i wish i could show you um I'll, I'll, once we hit the training w's you'll be able to see it's it's so much damage and it gives you so much health back it's just a no-brainer both guardian and and feral are using this so if you're an agi druid slap it in there because it's great all right so now that we've we've talked about how to feral uh, let's let's take a look at both a, an AOE situation and a single target situation with how you're going to handle it. So we're going to start with the AOE. <clears throat> so obviously you're going to stealth. If it's a situation where you can you you know you see a pack coming, I always like if you're running blood talents, which you should be, use it. Slap a re regrowth on there. You got two stacks and run up in there. And now you want to make sure that uh, mobs are as close as possible because uh, when you come in and you hit that initial rake, it'll hit multiple enemies if they're close enough so you'll come in you'll hit your tiger's fury and boom there they go they all got hit and then you immediately want to start applying your your dots so you'll throw thrash on there in aoe and then you hit a swipe because there's no reason to hit thrash again and it costs 40 energy versus 35. now that you have that up you can throw on your primal wrath to get those bleeds rolling and then in order to stack it back up again i go around and i rake I rake, and then you've got your regrowth to get a Blood Talons up, and then I will Primal Wrath again, and then use the second Blood Talons to Thrash. That way you have, and you can see from these numbers I have up here, and I will try to find the link for this weak aura. Um, these numbers up here are for your snapshotting, your bleeds, and what they show is whether or not the next bleed that you apply at the buff that you have is going to be better than the one before. So if you watch, I'll come back in, Thrash. And it's 100% grayed out, means that if you do it again, it's going to give you the exact same damage benefit. Rake. And then I'm going to do Big Rip. So all of them are up there. And now that I hit Tiger's Fury, I got the damage buff. I got Bloodlust. I got the uh, the Blood Talons up. So the next Thrash gives me 44% extra damage. Next Rake gives me 44% extra damage. Next Ripped gives me 44% extra damage. And so I rely... If I had to get rid of all of my other UI, I would keep those numbers. I, I like And just keep one thing, it would be that. Because it's so much easier on a class that has a high skill cap, um, high number of actions per minute, to have those to kind of rely on to know when you need to do something. Now, one thing I will go back on. When you come in, get blood of the enemy on cooldown as quick as possible and try to use it on as many enemies as possible. So... You want to come in with your stealth, have your, your blood talons on, come in, boom, lead with that, that initial rake. And one thing I try to always do is rake the target, realizing that you're going to stun someone with it. Rake the target that's going to be a caster or going to have the most obnoxious mechanics to deal with to help stagger when interrupts are going to need to come out for certain mechanics. Um, so you're going to come in, you're going you're gonna to hit the rake uh, on Tiger Fury's Bloodlust, and then boom, blood of the enemy. And then you want to start making sure that all your bleeds are up, and then once you have thrash up and on an AOE situation, you're just swiping. Swipe away. Make sure that your bleeds stay up and swipe away. Um, on weeks like this where it's bolstering, you may want to swap and go a little bit single target to help burn a higher higher uh, HP mob down. And then make sure that you're just keeping those bleeds up. Um, remembering that if you're really looking to deal significant single target damage, you need to be spending uh, some of your combo points 
on Ferocious Bite. I'm so happy that it didn't even show how much damage that did, but I think my latency is having a hell of a time tonight. 125k from that Ferocious, and that wasn't even really a critical hit. Um, and I'm also not running Sabertooth. So that's pretty much what you do for, for your AoE. Um, you know, I like to, to move around a whole lot just to kind of keep keep things moving, and you've got the speed boost, so I, I always say a cat in motion stays in motion. So it allows you to kind of get in and get out and, and keep the damage ro rolling and, and avoid, to hit, you know, eating certain mechanics. And also, don't ever forget that you've got a charge with your Skull Bash. That's another great thing with Bounce Affinity. It increases the range that you can use Skull Bash to kind of close that distance if you got to get in there real quick. Um, now, another thing to note, uh, looking into the utility a little bit here. Um, Typhoon, Typhoon, I already talked about how you handle that. Uh, Hibernate can be cast from, uh, from Cat Form. So you don't have to, to come out to interact with that. So if you're dealing with a beast like in uh, Atal Dazar, those pterodactyls that need to be uh, interrupted, that's a, that's a good option there. Um, another thing that a lot of Feral Druids forget about, you've got one interrupt. But you also have Maim, which is an extremely powerful stun that deals damage and stuns for five seconds. So on weeks like this week where it's bolstering, if you got one enemy up that's bolstered to high heaven and he's a Whomper, use Maim. Use Maim. He's probably low on health. Use Maim and let's the, uh, use those last five seconds of not taking hits to just deal damage or let the tank get away to chain pull into something else. Um, you know, what? It, the worms in, uh, in Underrot that need to be interrupted every single time, you've got Skull Bash, you've got Maim. If you're running Mighty Bash, you've got that as well. And then, after all that's said and done, if you're a, a Night Elf, you can Shadow Meld, hit your Rake, get that stun off from there, and I guarantee you by that time, Skull Bash or Maim is back off a of cooldown. So you can handle a lot of those stun interrupt mechanics all on your own as a Feral Druid. It's awesome. It's a wonderful utility that they bring that Balanced Druids cannot. Um, like on Shrine of the Storms, uh, that, you know, having having the, the melee interrupt on the second boss is massive. Massive. All right. <clears throat> Lastly, looking at, uh, looking at the single target. Um, now, apply some of the, the, the bigger cooldowns, like our Berserking cooldown, pre-pot, stuff like that. If you're dealing with bigger AoE pulls, you're going to handle those pulls the same way that you handle stepping off onto, say, a raid boss or a dungeon boss. You're going to do the pre-pot, you're going to pop Berserking, and stuff like that. Um, so, it's the same thing. We're going to go into it. I'm actually going to come over to this one so you can see it a little bit better, because that guy's hogging. Um, so, we're going to pop Regrowth. We're going to go in, we're going to pre-pot. Uh, and then as we get closer, we're going to pop Tiger's Fury, come off with the Rake, hit Berserker, and just go wild. Apply all your bleeds, get that Thrash up, get your Rip up, get that off, and then s start using Shred to stack up combo points. And then you want to start getting the Empowered versions of your, uh, your Rips up there. Um, you use, uh, use Blood of the Enemy, get that on cooldown. Um... It's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, it's, it's maintaining your bleeds and getting as many ferocious bites in there as you possibly can. The one little min maxi thing that you can do is, uh, you'll see here. So, I have a Tiger's Fury and, uh, Blood Talons empowered, uh, Rake on the target right now. However, if I go Shadow Meld and get a Rake off... It's going to be an even more powerful version of Rake. So if you have no reason to interact with Shadow Meld in the upcoming pulls after the boss, use it. Use it, get that extra damage. Let's see if I can show it here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, it's Tiger's Fury and Blood Talons Empowered, but Shadow Meld, another 60% on top of that. Massive. Huge damage. Huge damage. So... Yeah, that's that's just a little min maxi thing that you can throw in there, but I mean it, it it's massive. It adds up. But this is uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. You come down and look, devour vitality is ten percent of your damage, and your healing, it is your second heal. It's twenty percent of your healing. It's all passive. It's all passive. Um, so that's huge. Lethal strikes passive. Ferocious bite is your biggest single target damaging ability. If it's a, if it's a heavy cleave. Uh, situation, your rip is obviously going to be the biggest from, uh, from Primal Wrath. See, I didn't even throw Brutal Slash in there. Um, the only thing that changes with Brutal Slash, though, is you use that. That costs 25 energy. Shred costs 40. 
So you can use that, get those on cooldown, and then start shredding after that when you're waiting for those to, to come back up. Because you're dealing 14, 15,000 damage with your Brutal Slash. Your Shred's dealing uh, with Wild Flesh Rending. Your Shred's dealing about the same. So honestly, it's, it's what you have the energy for and need. Um, one other little thing to pay attention to. Your Ferocious Bite is a... F you you want to use all your stuff at 5 combo points, but your Ferocious Bite uh, at 5 combo points plus 25 energy is when it deals the max damage because it's a finishing move that causes physical damage per combo point and consumes up to 25 additional energy to increase the damage by 100%. Um, this is rarely, if ever, an issue because energy regens so quickly and 25 is like moot most often that... Uh, when you when it comes to using a ferocious bite, like let's say I've got the I'm full up and boom, uh, that was because I used a tiger's fury. But let's uh, let's get that on cooldown again. Spend all this spend all this uh, energy, and you can see this bar up here. Uh, spend all the energy again. Let's just keep spending energy, keep spending energy. By the time I cast my regrowth and use ferocious bite, it's automatically. Um, over 25. So that's rarely, if ever, an issue. But again, something you can look at, understand how the uh, how the spec works, how the the uh, the rotation is. But uh, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. Uh, remember, you've got the ability to purify curses and poisons, um, and that is an easy instant cast from cat form. So I help out a lot when it comes to the uh, the pillars, uh, the spider boss that comes out of there. She puts a curse on. So I can handle that. Anytime poisons go out, like in King's Rest, I can handle that. It just takes that GCD away from having to be interacted with by the healer and puts it on the shoulders of somebody that relies primarily on dots to get the job done. And we can let the dots continue to do their damage. So if you're going to come in a dungeon as a feral druid, when it is clearly not the meta, you need to be bringing this level of utility and this level of hands-on play to the arena to really show, you know, what, what your purpose for being there. Um, because you don't have, you know, a darkness or heavy leech like Demon Hunters or the, the super aggressive amount of cleave and burst damage like Demon Hunters do or the ability to interact with mobs from a range like Hunters do. You ha you're, you're up in it and you are a little bit squishier than, than most other classes. However, unlike most other classes, you have two uses of a massive, massive defensive. That's huge. You have the ability to heal yourself for at up to thirty or a thirty percent baseline of your maximum health instantly in cat form. Huge regrowth. I'm hitting regrowths as instant casts to proc my blood talons um, for between eighty and one hundred and twelve k. That's huge. I use that to help uh, top the tank off or get somebody above the grievous limit or something like that. You got to make sure that you're 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 hitting all your buttons using it. It's a hell of a class. It's so much fun. And just watching all those numbers pop up above the enemies when you hit all your bleeds and everything's ticking away. Uh, it's, it's, it really is. It's a lot of fun. But it does take um, a little hands-on appreciation of, of your rotation and, and, and like I said, the, the knowledge of, of what you need to be doing next. Um, they're kind of like the, the disciplined priest of, of DPS in, in that sense of, of knowing what you need to do in the next step more so than what you're doing right now. So, anyways, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. Sorry I rambled on for a little bit there, but that is Feral Druids in a little dummy's basket. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Share, like, comment. Uh, I, I appreciate everything you guys do. And if you want to see some more hands-on play, um, I stream pretty much every day except for Sunday at facebook.gg slash ragingbeardedscott um, from about 12 p.m. PST until 5 p.m. PST-ish. So you guys can check me out there, and if you have any other questions about ferals, that's where I'll be. Until next time, you guys remember, we rage because we care. See ya.